Okay, so I am on a mission to get a million people in the year 2020 learning how to do a fasting lifestyle. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a fasting lifestyle so that you can overcome depression and anxiety. Because you were born in a body that heals itself, you just never been taught how to use it. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use your own healing power to overcome depression and anxiety. So get ready, this is a great one. Okay, so let's dive in to how do you create a fasting lifestyle for depression and anxiety. Now, a lot of times we throw those two words together, yet when you go to build yourself a fasting lifestyle, you often have to do different things for depression than you do for anxiety. So I will walk you through those different steps and when, there's, when we need to veer right for depression and left for anxiety, I'll, I'll let you know that. So if you're new to my channel, you're new to this idea of a fasting lifestyle, go back, watch the video I did on the seven steps that you want to use to create a fasting lifestyle. To me, just the general idea behind a fasting lifestyle is that your body heals itself. And so we want to use the principles of fasting, the way the different styles of eating, the principles of microbiome and detox and all the seven steps to tap into your own internal healing power. That's what a fasting lifestyle is about. So let's, I'm gonna, let's just dive right in and let's look at depression and anxiety. So when I'm working with a patient, the first thing I think of when we're dealing with a condition like depression and anxiety is I ask myself, what organs are involved. And when we look at the two organs involved in depression and anxiety, you're really looking at the gut and you're looking at the brain. Now, I wanna give you sort of just, just sort of a big vision idea about gut-brain connection before I get into the details of the fasting lifestyle. So we have all, we just really realized, woke up to this in the last couple of years, that there are neurotransmitters that are produced in the gut that will send a signal up to the brain and, and determine how the brain functions. What we're starting to wake up to right now and in, in just in like the last year or two is that the brain, whatever's going on in the brain is also affecting the gut. So it's like a feedback loop. So if you want to fix anything in the brain, you always have to think about the gut and if you wanna fix anything in the gut, you always have to think about the brain. They're like a team that works together. Now they're linked by one nerve that's really important and it's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is the nerve that pretty much stimulates, controls all parasympathetic activity. Parasympathetic activity is your rest and digest nervous system. So there, you'll see as I go through this, that there is a piece to making sure that the communication from the brain to the gut via the vagus nerve is happening and it is, is turned on and is in full force. So I'll talk about that as I, as I teach you how to build a fasting lifestyle for this, okay? So let's start. Remember step one of building a fasting lifestyle? Which fasts do we know are helpful? So. There are three fasts that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I mean, all fasts are gonna be wonderful, but these three specific to depression and anxiety are gonna be the most helpful. The first fast is my favorite, the 24-hour fast. And the 24-hour fast, it, why I love it so much, is that's the fast that helps your, your, in, your stem cells in your intestinal mucosal lining, the outer lining of the intestines, it helps to reboot, repair, reset the uh, stem cells that are in that intestinal lining. So if you, you need to have that intestinal lining healthy so that you can produce neurotransmitters like GABA, dopamine, serotonin. So make sure when you're building out your fasting lifestyle that you're um, including some 24-hour fasts so we can get these intestinal stem cells regenerated on a regular basis. Okay, second fast, and this is not one that I always recommend, but it has great science behind it for, uh, for B, something called BDNF, and this is a dry fast. So dry fasts 
have, uh, and the research with dry fasting is anywhere from 12 to 24 hours without food or water, what we know will increase BDNF. So BDNF is like brain fertilizer and it will help with repair of dendrites in the brain. But we also know that when BDNF goes up, it stimulates serotonin. And serotonin is a major player, especially in depression. So when you're going to put your fasting lifestyle together, also make sure that you're putting in some dry fast, 12 to 24 hours. I absolutely do not recommend you go past 24 hours, but you can throw some 12 to 24 hour dry fast in. Now, one way to combine two fasts is you could dry fast for 24 hours and you're gonna get the intestinal stem cells like I mentioned earlier, and you're gonna get the BDNF. So again, that's a way you can combine two fasts. Okay, then the other helpful fast that you can use for depression and anxiety is a 48 hour fast. And this fast is, the reason I threw this in is research shows that around 48 hours, it's a little bit different on everybody, but around 48 hours, that dopamine receptor sites will resensitize. So go back and watch the videos that I did on dopamine fasting. Go watch the brain reset videos that I did because we know that we're getting too much saturation of our dopamine receptor sites from overeating, from uh, being on our phones too much, from constant stimulation to the brain. Just like we get insulin resistant, we become dopamine resistant. So throw in some 48 hour fasts so that you can resensitize those receptor sites, okay? So step number one of the fasting lifestyle allows you to reboot your dopamine receptor sites by applying those three fasts. 24 hour fast, dry fast, and a 48 hour fast. Okay, step number two, what eating style should you apply? Now, this is where I think the ketogenic diet really shines. Now, a lot of you probably may or may not know that originally the ketogenic diet was used to, um, for people with seizures because of the, br uh, the power that ketones had on the brain. So I also love, I mean, you guys have probably see this a lot, that when I tap into a more ketogenic state, that ketones, not only do they heal the brain, but as your ketones go up, a major neurotransmitter that those of you that are anxious, this is the one that you really need, that your, when ketones go up, GABA goes up. So just ask anybody or talk to anybody on the fourth day of a water fast when their ketones are flying high, they're just chill. They don't feel like talking. They're just super relaxed. So make sure that if you're trying to affect depression, but specifically anxiety, make sure that you're throwing in, that you're leaning in to a ketogenic diet. And I've done a lot of videos on that. Okay, toxins to look out for. So major toxin that I've seen with depression is mold. And so make sure you don't have any mold in your shower, any mold in your house. Mold can be a depressant. There's a beautiful website. If you think you have any mold, go check out uh, survivingmold.com. There's great resources for you there. There's ways you can test mold in your house, but the toxin to look out for with depression specifically is mold. The toxins to look out for with anxiety are more heavy metals, specifically mercury. So those of you that have a lot of mercury fillings, uh, you know that you've been exposed. It seems like in this day and age, we're getting more and more people that know they've been exposed to mercury. Mercury tends to cause us to be anxious and overstimulates us. So heavy metals can affect your moods. Lead tends to be more of a depressant. So if you're depressed, what are your lead levels? Have you checked your water? Though there, again, I've done whole videos on detoxing. I just wanted to bring in the concepts for you on this fasting lifestyle. Okay, let's go into the next step, supplements. What supplements would be helpful if you're experiencing depression and anxiety? So these are actually two of my favorite. Seraphos is, will help the, over ang the anxious person who can't sleep, um, that is feeling really wound up. Seraphos will lower cortisol. So this is one of my favorite. You can take it as needed when you're feeling anxious or if you wake up at two in the morning, um, we'll put the link into how to find that. Um, and then for those of you that are depressed, 
Calm is fabulous for helping to build, make serotonin. Calm has the, the herbs and the um, vitamins that you need to make serotonin. So this is more for those of you that are depressed. This is more for those of you that are anxious. And if you're struggling to sleep, this is my favorite supplement, a melatonin supplement to help you sleep. And I kind of, I threw it in there because a lot of times when you're depressed and anxious, you have trouble sleeping. So these two sit by my bed, all at my bedside at night. If I feel like I wake up and my body can't relax, I'll give my, to Seraphos. If I'm feeling like I just, my body's not, doesn't feel like it's nighttime, I'll do some DREM, couple DREM. So those are the supplements I would use for depression and anxiety. Neurosyn is another one. Um, those of you that are Neurosyn fans, just really helps with a clear brain. I didn't have one here to show you, but that's another one. We'll put a link in there. Okay, biohacks. So natural biohacks for depression, and anxiety, sunlight. Make sure you're getting out in the sun. Remember that you have serotonin receptor sites um, in your eyes. So when you register its day, your body purposely will elevate serotonin levels because it wants you to be happy during the day. That's how intelligently we were designed. So make sure you're getting out in the sun. Make sure you're exercising. Remember, exercise raises BDNF. When BDNF goes up, serotonin goes up. So if you're trying to build a fasting lifestyle because you're depressed and you're not exercising, please go exercise. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could be go for a walk in the sun and now you've, you've mixed two things. Um, meditation, those of you that are fans of meditation, especially for anxiety, can calm the brain. Um, and then chiropractic is another great one because of Heidi Havoc's work. We know that a chiropractic adjustment pulls you to the prefrontal cortex so that you get, go to your optimistic part of your brain. And then there is great research showing that if you just hang around positive people, people's attitudes are going to rub off on you. So find some communities. Join our resetters. We, we have so many incredible stories in there. If you need an, uh, somebody to lift you up, all you got to do is post in the Resetter Collaborative on Facebook. And wow, you'll get, there's like 26,000 people in there that'll cheer you on. So those are good. Put yourself in positive environments. Okay, then we also know things like hyperbaric oxygen and red light therapy. A lot of the red light, go watch the video that I did with Scott Nelson on red light therapy. Those kind of biohacks, oxygen therapy, light and oxygen, your cells need them, they'll function better and you'll find your moods will lift. Okay, how do you put that all together? And I'm gonna do it really quickly here for you. So it's the fast, I would say, if I'm really depressed and anxious, I'm gonna stay in a ketogenic state for, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with the ketogenic diet. I'm gonna do it pretty much every day. I'm, what I am gonna mix up is I'm gonna mix up the fasts. So maybe once a week, I do a 24 hour fast that's a dry fast. Then maybe three days later, I do another 24 hour fast, but it's not a dry fast. And then once a month, I decide to reset my dopamine receptor sites by going 48 hours. I'm gonna stick to a ketogenic diet so I can get those ketones up to help with, with GABA. And I'm gonna assess, do I have mold? Do I maybe have some toxic issues that need to, to be handled? I'm gonna lean into the supplements if I think they're needed. I'll lean into the supplements, like maybe I'll try Seraphos for a month and see if that helps calm me. And I'll try Calm to see if that lifts my moods. And then I'll get out into the sun every day for a 10 minute walk. Maybe I'll go in the morning because there's more red light in the morning, so I'm getting red light along with the sun, with the, the movement. That's how simple it can be. You're just taking these seven pieces and you're putting them all together, okay? That's depression and anxiety. I know that was a lot. If you, you know, go back, watch it, write it down. We're trying to create little squares for you guys so you can follow, uh, follow it in a very simple way. But the fasting lifestyle, it is all about you heal yourself. This body was designed to heal, so you heal yourself. And these are the principles you can use to do that. If you want to know more about this, join us at the Reset Experience. This is what we're going to teach you is how to build yourself a fasting lifestyle so that you can be in control of your health. Or you can join us in the Forever Young Reset. Just 
We're gonna teach you how to slow down aging with the fasting lifestyle. So just put Reset Experience or Forever Young Reset in there. And again, just really cool principles for a really cool body that you've been given. You just haven't been taught how to use it. So as always, let me know, is this helpful? Is it new? Are, you make, are these videos making a difference in your own health? And put them in the comments. We read them, we interact with you. We love hearing how our community is doing. And if you're moved by any of my videos, share them out. Let's, I, I wanna get a million people creating a fasting lifestyle in 2020. So from the bottom of my heart, I hope that helps.